Welcome back to another Robots episode. In this video, we will see how to set up Robot DK with a Kuka robot. First of all, we will need to set up Kukavar proxy. If you guys missed my last video, here's a small recap. Go into the GitHub page and download the repository. Once you have the repository, you will need to copy the files into the controller. You may use a USB or a shared folder. In my case, I use a shared network location. Once you copy it over the files, you minimize the HMI to go into Windows. You go into the Explorer and find it. Once you have the files located, you will have to create a direct access and copy this direct access into the startup folder. Any program that is in this folder will run when the robot starts up. As you can see, I went into the start menu and right click on the startup folder and select it Explore. After that, I create a shortcut and copy that shortcut and put it in the startup folder, like I said before. This will start the server. Now we will need to open a port for the variables to be shared over the network. So we go into the network configuration, press advanced and then NAT. Here we will add a port. The port is 7000. As you can see in the documentation in GitHub. Then we change the protocols permitted TCP UDP and we save. After saving, the controller will ask to reboot and reload the files. Any changes in the network configuration or in the safety system will need a cold start. Okay, now let's talk about RoboDK. RoboDK is a simulation software. It helps programming the robots in a more easy way. Their program can be used for free, but it's limited to 50 lines of code. You can buy the license and add more functionality, such as uh, cameras, more lines of code, easy programming with a touch probe, and fine calibration. You can find all these in their website. Let me show you. Here, for example, they also have a 3D simulation online. You can check any 3D models or a fast program, just there, live on their website. If we go to products, we can see the robot calibration like I said before. They have a very professional team and they can help you set up your robot and calibrate it with a camera or laser. And finally, the last product, TwinTrack. With this product, you can move a robot and easily program it with a tool in your hand. I really appreciate the effort for having everything very well documented. They also have this video on a PDF in their website, very well explained step by step. You just need to go into Documentation, Robot Tips, Kuka Robots, and then RoboDK Driver for Kuka. Here they will explain how to transfer a program, post-processor behavior, start a robot program, retrieving the TCP, retrieving the robot joins, and the things that I'm explaining in this video, which is setting up Kukavar proxy and connecting RoboDK to a robot. And of course, simulate a robot, create a small program, Simulate it virtually in our computer and also transfer it and see it live on the robot. So don't go anywhere because the show is about to start now. To start off, we will copy the program that the controller will be running on a loop. Also, we will need to set up some global variables. These variables need to be copied into the file config, which can be located in R1 still. Here you can see me copying the files from my shared folder in my network location into the D partition. After we locate it in the D partition, we copy it into the R1. You can see there are some errors in the compilation. This is due to the fact that the global variables haven't been declared yet in the config file. So let me copy that over, go into the R1, still, sorry, no, still, config, and here we go. Now, after we copy this over, we will be able to run the program. So we save the changes and we confirm. As we can see, there's no compilation error. So let's select RoboDK Sync and run it. Now I will need to head over the controller because right now it's in T1 and we want to run it in automatic. We turn on the drives and we play. Now the program will be running on a loop, like I said before, and we won't need to take care of the controller anymore. The robot will be controlled through the computer. If we analyze the code, I'm sure they're just injecting code into the KUKA global variables through KUKA var proxy server. Anyway, let's head back to the program. 
on the computer finally. When you open the program, you will see the same blue gradient that we saw on the website. Since I don't have the 3D model of my robot, we will have to go online and search for it. But don't worry, you can find the 3D models in RoadWayK's official website. You will have to go into Resources, Library. But through the client, you can also access the same website. You go into File, Open Online Library, and there you will have to look for your 3D model. In my case, it's a KUKA robot. So I go into KUKA and then find KR10 R1100, which is the second one. Here, I didn't realize it was the second one, so I was going to select a six axis robot to move another filter, but then I realized, so I downloaded the file. And it's pretty simple, you just need to open the file. Here, I didn't realize that uh, it was already importing it, so I imported twice the robot. And I deleted one, of course. Here, I was a bit confused as to why of the axis coordinates weren't being deleted with the robot. So I created another station and then I just kind of forgot about it because it was just like a phantom issue, just a UI problem. As you can see on the left side, we only have three objects, the station, the base and the robot, but the other base is not appearing in the tree classification. So I quickly ignored it. Now if you follow the steps of the documentation, the next step is to click on the robot, right click and select connect. So we do that. So if you install Kukavar proxy and you have the program selected, you should be connected once you input the IP address and the port. Pretty simple, right? Now all we have to do is create a program. So to create a program, we will need to change the selection tool because right now, as you can see, the mouse is just changing the view of the camera. So we will have to click on the second icon of the mouse. Since it had been a while since I used the robotic key, I couldn't find the icon, so I was looking for it, and then I realized, oh, right, it's this mouse with the base and the move icon. So here we are, and now we change the position a bit and create two targets. Targets in this case, it's like points. And then we can create trajectories. Trajectory from the target one to the target two. The trajectory icon is the one next to the notepad. It's the one that selects one point and then there's like a line to the second red point. Here I was making sure that the robot was making the movements that I just made in the simulation. So you can right click on it and select go to position. Here I forgot that I didn't make the program so I couldn't run the simulation. It was just two targets and two positions, just basically making two points and nothing to link them together. This program is quite powerful. You can also add Python scripts, as you can see on the icon next to the notepad also on the left. And on the right of the notepad, as I said, is the trajectory that I'm missing right now to make the program. In addition, you can also add cameras or other 3D objects to make the cell, for example. And if you right click on the robot, you can also add some configurations, such as TCP coordinates. So let's jump into the program. Now that I fixed the problem, which was the trajectory, you can right click on it and select the options that you want. In this example, I will select loop, execute on the robot and execute the program. If you just execute, it will just simulate it on the program. If you execute it on the robot, you can see it in real time. After simulating the movements, you can also right click and generate the program. If you generate the program, you will need to transfer it and then select the program. So that's it for today. I will leave you guys with my simulation and you can see how it's working in real. As you can see, using this program, you can program any robot easily without any problems. You don't need to be a KUKA expert or any robotics expert for that matter. Anyway, I hope you guys liked this video. And as always, if you have any questions or suggestions, please leave a comment below. And as always, like and subscribe and see you in the next video.